Hi, today we are going to review pages 96 through 98. Uh, we're going to work all the questions together. You're, you need to be um, updating your paper so that you have the correct answers and you know why and upload new photos of this assignment with all the corrected answers, okay? So that's the plan. Let's um, get started on it now. We've already done number one. The instructions were to cross out any words that are incorrect and inappropriate or inappropriate to standard formal English, formal English only, right? And corrections were necessary. Number two, anyone can open their own checking account if they make an initial deposit of $10 or more. Well, anyone is singular. You want to say may open his own checking account if he makes, not make, but makes an initial deposit of $10 or more. Okay. Number three, Satan together with the evil angels were thrown out of heaven. Oh, I, I read it the correct way because I just, it didn't compute in my mind. That should be thrown. And was. Satan was thrown. Together with the evil angels, um, that um, is just designed to throw you off here, I guess. Because it's this is um, Satan, comma, together with the evil angels. That is a phrase, it's a positive phrase. Number four, whom did the class think should, should have been chose? Okay, well, this one's pretty simple. We remember that nominative case pronouns are used for subject, and who and whose is the nominative case. So who did the class think should have been chosen? Okay, number five. They don't have no work for Joy and myself right now, but hopefully our chances will be some better next week. Okay. So they do not, this is formal English, so no contractions. They do not have any work for Joy and me. That's object of preposition, it has to be an objective case pronoun, and we don't use self, right? Remember that? But hopefully, it should be changed to, but we hope our chances will be somewhat better next week. There is no lack of resources, number six. There is no lack of resources to provide for man's needs if they could only learn to use their resources wise and unselfishly. Okay, well, let's see. So there is no lack, because lack is the subject. Oh, um, let's see. If he could only learn to use his resources wisely and unselfishly, okay? The speech didn't hardly have the effect that the speaker hoped it would have. Okay, so we know we gotta, that's a contraction we've got to get rid of that, did not. And we just get rid of hardly outright. There's no replacement. Just, just don't, don't say did not hardly. You just say, the speech did not have the effect, that's wrong, you have to say effect, because effect is a noun, effect is the verb, that the speaker had hoped it would have. Maybe the reason you are nauseous is because you have 
over eight. <laughs> okay, well, that's overeaten. Um, is because is wrong. You have to say is that you have overeaten. Nauseous is uh, um, Nauseous is what something makes you, or, or when, if something makes you na nauseated, that thing is nauseous, like the boat was nauseous. I was nauseated on the boat. So this should be nauseated. N-A-U-S-E-A-T-E-D. Okay. Number nine, the speedy runner rounded second base and slided safe into third. Slid safely into third. Number 10, we were sorry to hear about you being confined to bed for so long a time. Such confinement sure must be difficult, especially being as you have always been terribly active. Okay. Extremely, because terribly is supposed to uh, be a negative. Um, no being as instead, especially since. Uh, so confinement, just get rid of sure and say surely. Okay, we, are, we were sorry to hear about you being. Okay, so being confined to bed is a gerund phrase. Being is the verb form ending in ing that's being used as a noun. We're sorry to hear about, and then you being confined to bed is the entire clause. Being confined to bed is the gerund phrase. And if you recall, the rule is if you have a pronoun, a personal pronoun before a gerund uh, phrase, then you must use the possessive case. Y-O-U-R, possessive meaning you possess it, you own it, your, okay? And that's it. Let's turn the page to page 97. Reviewing the sentence, the word, and mechanics. Edit the following selection to meet the requirements of standard former, formal English again. Check the sentences for correctness, clearness, and effectiveness. Check the words for correctness, appropriateness, and exactness. Eliminate jargon, triteness, and wordiness. Check the mechanics, handbook section 37 to 38, 41 to 42, and mark your revisions on this page and then rewrite selection on a separate sheet of paper. You, have, you may have to write more than one graph. Okay, so I'm gonna help you get the corrections noted and then you're gonna have to rewrite it. Okay, I had to. I had to get our correction symbols document because this, we have to use the correction symbols document to mark this correctly. And remember the correction symbols for you are on the back page of your grammar, handbook for grammar and composition. So you need to, to get that out. I'm gonna use this for convenience so I could just pop it in and out. All right, for example, it says, we're down here uh, on, oh no, so history. History is filled with men like Sextus. There's nothing really wrong with that sentence. Um, so men who have boldly asserted things which turned out to be ludicrously fa false, that is a fragment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, one need not look far to find these examples of the folly of human wisdom. I don't see anything wrong with that. For example, a bounteous supply of blunders has been given to us by science. Um, has been given is passive. Ineffective use of passive voice. So we're going to mark that. And we're going to try to, when you rewrite it, turn that sentence into active, meaning the subject does the action. Science gives us or has given us bount a bounteous supply of blunders, maybe, that because that, science does the giving. All right, so Lord Kelvin made, in the 19th century, significant contributions to physics. Okay. This should be moved to the end. So this is a misplaced modifier. But he was certainly not infallible. 
Okay. Among other things, Kelvin said that no one would ever invent a successful flying machine, that the radio had no future, and that x-rays will prove to be a hoax. Wow, he was wrong, huh? So um, there should be a comma after Kelvin. So I'm going to put P there for punctuation. I'm sorry, it's not, it's not after Kelvin. It's before Kelvin. Among other things, comma, Kelvin said that no one... Let's see here. Um, so there's nothing wrong punctuation-wise or anything else except for the last item in the list. This is a list. So these are clauses that no one would ever invent a successful flying machine, that radio had no future, and x-rays would be, would, will provide prove to be a hoax. I'm sorry. So what we've got to do is fix this. This is, it should be um, that, that, and that. So he said that no one, that radio had, that x-rays would. So this is a problem with parallelism. Um, P-A-R, error in parallelism, okay? Fortunately, these solemn pronouncements were ignored by later generations. Nothing really wrong with that. Even more recently, Sir Richard Woolley, an astronomer of Royal, uh, um, the Astronomer Royal of Britain said, space travel is all bilge. You know, bilge, um, Interesting. So the bilge is the uh, the empty space under uh, in the in the between I guess the bottom floor and the the very bottom of the boat. Um, if you, when you when you have a boat that's taking in water under there, you have a pump that pumps it out, and they call that the bilge pump. So that's how I know that word, but I've never heard it used as a negative uh, as, as an insult, kind of like that. Um, so here's the thing. This is a quote in a quote. Um, let's see, even more recently. Oh, no, it's not a quote in a quote. This is just, but that period needs to be inside. So I'll put a P there to indicate that. And he said a sentence. So that needs to be the first letter is capitalized in the sentence. Even more recently, Sir Richard Woolley, Sir is part of his name, so that needs to be capitalized. Um, Sir Richard Woolley, comma, that's in a positive, so there needs to be a comma there. The, Roy the Astronomer Royal of Britain said, okay. Um, we set apart with commas. Uh, Sir Richard Woolley, comma, the Astronomer Royal of Britain, comma, said space travel is all built. That was in 1956, comma, 13 years later. That sounds like a run-on to me. That was in 1956, period. 13 years later, astronomers or astronauts were walking on the moon. So the moon should be lowercase. That was 1956. This is a run-on. Um, So, and maybe, comma, and, or you can make a period, capitalize the T, whatever you think is best. There is a better uh, solution, but men who are in the area of the arts have made passionate predictions which have since proven false. Okay, so who are, who are in the area of? All of that is just wordy. Um, w, D, Y. have uh, Wagner, for instance, well, actually, we need to go back here. Passionate predictions of sense, of, no, that's true, that's right. Uh, Wagner, for instance, was convinced that the phonograph was merely a mechanical toy, which was of no real value. So all of this, or which was, it, it's wordiness, because you could have eliminated it entirely. A mechanical toy of no value would work. That's just too wordy. How he would thrill if he could hear his music pouring forth. Isn't that a spelling mistake? Gloriously from the modern stereo system. 
Oh, pouring. P O R E. Okay, that's the wrong word. It's not a spelling mistake per se. P O U R is the pro appropriate word for pour. You know, P O R E is a noun. I'm not sure how you turn it into a verb like that, but it's certainly the wrong root word. So, all right. Uh, fourth is the wrong word also, isn't it? F-O-R-T-H, that, that first, that, that fourth is the one that we should do. And then, oh, how he would means that this should be a exclamation point. That, oh, how he would have been, that's an exclamation point. The 19th century art critic, John Hunt, okay? Well, we got to, um, we have to uh, fix this. this. This MS is manuscript form issue. This has to be written out, 19th, and then this should not be abbreviated. So this is manuscript form as well. John Hunt. Uh, I do not think we put commas here because that is, um, a, it's essential because in the appositive is the more detailed part. If it was, um, you know, John Hunt, comma, the 19th century art critic, comma, achieved, that would be considered non-essential and you would put commas, yes. But because John Hunt is the one that's the appositive. It's more information, more detailed, a specific art critic, you know, then we don't put commas there. Achieved immortality of a sort by bumptiously, I love that word, asserting that Rembrandt was not worthy to be compared to the extraordinarily gifted artist, Mr. Rippingdale. <laughs> okay, there's nothing wrong with that sentence, but I find it funny. Rembrandt is still considered the greatest of the Dutch masters um, well, Dutch should be capital, and that should be a comma there, punctuation. But who on earth, I don't think you would say who on earth, it's not appropriate for formal writing, it's A-P-P-R, has heard of Mr. Rippingdale, and who on earth implies something emphatic, so therefore you needed an exclamation point. Oh no, it's, a, it's not an expert. It is still P, but it's a question because you get rid of the who on earth, but, who, but, but who has heard of Ms., Ms., Mr. Rippingdale? And that's a question mark. All right, let's turn to page 98. There's more of this same assignment. But this is the last page of it. Businessmen even have occasional lapses, for example, or lapses, comma, that should be a period because that just sounded like it and I even read it that way. It's, that's a run on because we should have a period there and a capital four. Uh, businessmen even have, um, that is a misplaced modifier, that word even, uh, if, if you're going to use it, you would say even businessmen have. So, you know, a modifier is just a word that, that makes things more specific. And so adjectives and adverbs are modifiers. So when you say a misplaced modifier, you're really just saying the adjective or the adverbs in the wrong place. Now, it could be a clause or a phrase that's acting as an adjective. But still, that's all that misplaced modifier means. For example, comma. A leading economist predicted in 1959, um, that's a misplaced modifier as well because, for example, in 1959, a leading economist predicted world inflation would soon be a thing of, of the past. This is the wrong word. Um, World inflation this one I need to look up. I'm not exactly sure why, uh, but the book will tell me so hold on. 
I feel silly. You probably already knew what this was. This is a logic problem because world inflation implies, I mean, we know that they're talking about the inflation of, of currency worldwide, but it sounds like you're going to take the world and blow it up like a balloon, the inf inflation of the world. And so that's why it's a logic problem. You might say um, currency uh, inflation worldwide would soon be a thing of the past, P-A-S-T. Okay, that's one. All right, moving, moving on. A quick glance. This is wordiness. And uh, particularly, you know, one of the issues um, with trite statements like this, that, you know, it's just they're unnecessarily long, a couple of extra uh, words that's not necessary, but it's also used so much. At food prices, you just say food prices will demonstrate how accurate he was. Okay, in 1902, a British record producer heard a rising young tenor in Italy and decided to commit the tenor singing to record. Now, why would one say all that? To commit the tenor singing to record? That's wordy. Decided to record him. Ten recordings of the tenor were made by the producer and the tenor was paid $500 through the agreement with him. Okay, well, we certainly missed the punctuation there because um, that should be a comma and. Um, this was paid passive. Uh, instead of saying the tenor was paid, you would want to say, um, so-and-so paid the tenor. This British record producer paid the tenor, so that's active. Okay, let's see. Um, this is manuscript form, should be written out. 500 is only two words. This is the wrong word. Oh, wait, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, let's go back up here. Where, uh, through agreement with him is all wordiness. So the problems with this are wordiness and its passive uh, voice, but then you also, this 500 needs to be written out. Um, were made, that's passive also. So instead of saying all that in passive voice, when you rewrite it, the, the producer recorded, uh, made 10 recordings and paid the tenor $500 or something like that. The owner of the record company was fit to be tied. Okay, so fit to be tied, you probably never even heard of it, but fit to be tied, when somebody is so upset that they need to be tied down, you know, that's a, it's a, it's a trite um, phrase. When it, um, so there are figure of speech, so let's do figure of speech. Um, and then that should end the sentence, but it doesn't. So we're going to say run on. He considered $500. That needs to be written out. MS, far too much money. That's wrong word. Um, to pay for a singer who was little known outside of Italy. Um, they're, they suggested that we, um, oh, that's a glossary of diction item. So let's find that. Let me look it up for us. In the glossary of diction, 35.67, inside of or outside of, you should omit the preposition of and just say, we're left outside the whatever. Okay, so outside of, this is a... Um, glossary of diction issue, but you want to get rid of, of outside Italy. All right. No tenor he maintained. Okay, so this is, should be a comma there and there. Was worth that much money. Um, but to the owner's surprise, the 10 records became bestsellers really fast. <clears throat> And the tenor went on to record even more bestsellers 
and his name was Enrico Caruso. All right, so we got problems here, lots of them. But to the owner's surprise, that should be an apostrophe S. The 10 records became best sellers really fast. Instead of saying really fast, we should say quickly became. Um, this is an issue with vividness or exactness. Not vividness. Exactness and vividness is EX. Okay. And the tenor went on to record even more bestsellers. And his name was Enrico Caruso. So, all right, well, this, there weren't need to say coordinate, uh, C O O R D, faulty coordination. Because this is, uh, it's supposed to be a coordinated conjunction. There's no comma there. Um, it really should be its own sentence. But the, the presence of and doesn't make it a, a, a sentence or a run on sentence. I mean, it's still technically okay syntax wise, but it's not good. So you anyway, put coordination right there. Um, and then you'll know to split it here. I think just put a period after sellers and a capital H and that let that sentence be alone. Even 60 years after his death, we already established that these numbers need to be um, need to be written out according to uh, manuscript form. Even 60 years after his death, his records, they still sold thousands. Well, his records, they, remember that's the double subject issue. So we, that's a glossary of diction. We did a bunch of those in the last uh, exercise like this. So perhaps the best example of executive miscalculation came at the end of World War II. That one sounds okay. Ford Motor Company officials were shown a bombed out factory in Germany and which was designed to produce an odd shaped little car. All right, well, um, this is a coordination issue, meaning it shouldn't have the end of it uh, anyway, because Ford Motor Company officials were shown a bombed out factory in Germany, comma, which was designed to produce an odd shaped little car. Um, bombed out is a hyphenated word, so put P there, but you know that that's what you gotta do, put a hyphen between those two. All right. Uh, Germany offered to give the factory to Ford, semicolon, but comma, explaining that no one wanted to buy such a strange looking car, the, the gift was refused. Okay, well that's just really strange. Um, explaining that no one wanted to buy a strange looking car is in the wrong place. So the Ger Germany offered to give the factory to Ford, but, um, I guess the gift was refused, although we want to not do passive language, right? Ford, um, but Ford explaining that no one would want to buy this strange looking car refused the gift maybe. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that explaining that no one would want to buy a strange looking car is, is what we call a dangling modifier, meaning it's out there, but there is no subject to hang it off of. That's because Ford, like I said, Ford needed to be on there. So Ford Motor Company officials were shown a bombed out factory in Germany, which was designed to produce an odd shaped little car. Germany offered to give the factory to Ford, comma, but Ford, explaining that no one would want to buy such a strange looking car, refused, the, refused them or refused the gift. The Germans therefore cleaned up the factory themselves and put it back into operation. That should be coordination again, yeah. Um, and went on, so quite a few of, them, of those, this is the wrong, uh, glossary of diction, those instead of them. Strange looking cars. 
and the cars were called Volkswagens. Uh, I think you need, this is a coordination issue as well. Too many ands, too many ands on independent. If, if you've got an and, and you've got an independent clause on both sides of it, then you need a comma for sure. But too many of them, it means that you're just not doing it right. So these are too many ands. And that's why we say coordination. And I say C-O-O-R, but it's actually C-O-R-O-R-D for coordination. These examples show that a man can be wise, comma, he can be respected, comma, he can be sincere, comma, he can also be passionate and dedicated, dash, and totally wrong. Okay, well, um, let's see. The he can be's all need to be eliminated. A man can be wise, respected, sincere, passionate, and totally wrong. And all of these are wordy. In fact, a study of history, in fact, there should be a comma there. In fact, comma, a study of history, uh, this should be lowercase, because we're not talking about the class, the history class, that would be a title of a class. No, we're talking about um, history as in, you know, the, um, just something that happened in the past. Might almost lead you to agree with T.H. Huxley, Huxley's wry comment, next to being, okay, this should not be a colon because we don't say the following. Instead, um, it should probably be punctuated, I mean, uh, quoted. Um, I think a comma, yeah, punctuation, a comma and quotes. Next to being right in this world, the best thing, the best of all things is to be clearly and, def and definitively wrong, close quote. Okay. Ooh, that was a lot of work, wasn't it? Okay, well, you can uh, update all of those. You know, I didn't write anything for you to put on there as an Easter egg to let me know that you finished. So why don't you write your name somewhere on page 98, okay? Write your name somewhere on page 98. That will help. You have a great day. I'll see you next time.